Many ask why North Korea decided to come to Pyongyang and jumpstart inter-Korean dialogue after such a long hiatus. Whatever their reason and motivation, it must be seen as a positive response to the consistent efforts of my government to engage the North. We have been steadfast in our position that North Korea's nuclear and missile programs are not acceptable, that its provocations will be met with pressure and sanctions, but that engagement is also required to find a peaceful path to North Korea's denuclearization. So South-North dialogue has resumed and it is likely to continue. But we are well aware that inter-Korean dialogue and improvements in South-North Korean relations cannot proceed in the absence of progress in the efforts to peacefully resolve the North Korean nuclear issue, which requires, in the first instance, direct talks between the United States and North Korea. So inter-Korean dialogue and US-North Korea dialogue must advance in a mutually reinforcing manner. Although there were no direct contacts between the United States and North Korean delegations on the sidelines of the Olympics, we were able to confirm through our discussions with each the willingness on both sides to engage directly. And now, through the special envoy's visit to Pyongyang, we hope to further explore North Korea's intentions or dialogue. All the dignitaries who visited Korea during the Olympics, and indeed the global media that closely follow the events around the Games, applauded the progress in inter-Korean talks and expressed broad support for our policy on the North Korean nuclear issue. And building on this positive momentum, we are continuing our diplomatic endeavors to open the path toward North Korea's denuclearization. We are clear on some key principal points. First and foremost, we are emphasizing to North Korea that it must not provoke again. Needless to say, another nuclear test or missile launch by North Korea will inevitably dampen the atmosphere for dialogue. Second, sanctions and pressure on North Korea will remain in place as long as it does not undertake substantial measures for denuclearization. The peaceful denuclearization of North Korea remains my government's unwavering goal. Yet, at the same time, there is a need to carry forward the momentum of dialogue created in Pyeongchang. And in particular, we must seek opportunities for the United States and North Korea to engage in dialogue for denuclearization. The United States is our staunch ally, and we continue to maintain close collaboration as we move forward. South Korea and the United States are on the same page in emphasizing to the North that it must change course on the nuclear issue, and if it changes course, we stand ready to offer it a brighter, more prosperous future. So far, North Korea has not indicated any desire to engage in denuclearization talks with the United States. But it knows very well that with the heavy sanctions placed upon it, its key interest cannot be secured without coming to terms with the United States. So we urge North Korea to seize this opportunity to engage in sincere dialogue. In the process, we will maintain close consultations with the United States in sustaining the momentum for dialogue and drawing a roadmap for denuclearization of North Korea.